Alright guys, it's Greg here, and I wanted to sort of uh, run through my workstation here. Um, for you guys that already know like what action figure customizing is and what I do, um, I'll be able to show you all the stuff that I use on a regular basis. And I think this also helps out with people who, uh, who aren't familiar with action figure customizing or like what it is I do. So um, the tutorials and the making of videos are one thing but kind of going through everything and just seeing all the tools of the trade right now uh, I think that could shed some light on this um, as well as seeing like some of the figures as they are like straight from the store out of the package um, in the various stages of customizing and, and some finished projects so we're gonna run through um, my workstation right now okay so let's start from right to left right here so what I have in the foreground are my sculpting tools and these are um, ball stylus tools made by Cloudstar's tools and I'll include the link in the description. I um, always have various uh, smaller paint brushes just to clean up the sculpted details so not really for painting as much as like um, I'll like dip them in water just to smooth out like the head sculpts or something. I um, also have a variety of like dental tools uh, and wax shaping tools just for different stuff that the, the ball stylus tools can't do. Uh, mechanical pencils usually for drawing on the plastic card and that's the styrene. So that's just, it comes in white sheets of varying thicknesses and I use that for a lot of fabrication. Super glue. Uh, I like this brand and I like the gel kind because um, it has more of a like uh, consistency than um, straight liquid and I can get it into better places. Toothbrush. I'll use this to uh, with some warm water and soap to clean up um, what I sculpt and that's usually before priming and painting. Then I have this Dremel tool, Dremel 4000 and a variety of attachments and stuff just for sanding and um, getting rid of details when I sculpt over. And this is what I sculpt with. I use um, Fix It Sculpt and it's made by Aves and uh, I'll put that link in there too. And this is a two-part epoxy um, and it usually dries, dries like a white color and uh, there's about like maybe three hour working time and then that the very last bit is like for final details so you're not gonna be able to mold or shape it anymore. Aves also makes uh, an epoxy sculpt with an A for epoxy and this is a little bit uh, more of a putty consistency and it it's just different than the fix it sculpt um, but this is black so uh, I'll pan over when I get to the next part you can see some figures I'm working on then this just makes it easier for um, like if the final figure is gonna be darker because uh, I don't know just dealing with paint rub if I'm using like the fix it or anything that's this bright color that's a lot of primering and uh, if paint rub and scratches it's really noticeable when um, when the paint kinda comes off so I've been using black a lot lately and uh, we'll see how that goes when I paint it Okay, moving on. These are uh, sealers. After I painted uh, a figure, I'll spray this sealant on them, and this is a matte finish uh, made by testers. And it used to be called Dull Coat, um, but they've changed the like labels a number of times. So as long as it says, um, yeah, it still says Dull Coat, depending like where you buy it up here. As long as it's a matte finish, that's good for me because uh, you don't want it really shiny. Um, scissors for cutting fabric and pliers. Also some uh, tweezers for tiny detail work. And this is the primer I use, or a variation of it made by, made by um, Flow Quill. And here's another example right here. And you mix this up. And um, there, I've used spray primers and just gray spray paints, but um, this is what I've been using for a while, and it works pretty good over um, over like the sculpting materials. And uh, I always have various figures in the background, um, stuff that like I'll find 
uh, randomly and I'll, I'll see if they they make good um, like custom fodder so right now is uh, Captain America Winter Soldier figures that I picked up and um, here's Black Widow and I'm gonna try and see what I can do with these I might just like repaint her head because there's some good likenesses on them I really like the Captain America body so I'll probably use it for stuff and in the back I always keep big tubes of acrylic for when I need to cover a large area say like I'm painting a big cape or fabrics or something and these are relatively cheap and um, they're not as high quality as like some of the other detail paints that I use alright moving on uh, I like to use the Games Workshop Citadel paints uh, there are a bunch of other brands that I see at the hobby stores but I um, I really started customizing by like painting the miniatures when I played Warhammer so I just stuck always stuck with these even though the prices have gone up exponentially uh, and it's a little bit outrageous so when I make a run to get new paints it kind of sets me back a little bit so I try and um but I mean you know I'm painting small figures so I don't really use that much paint at a time um, alright and then <laughs> you can see I always have figures in various stages of construction either what I'm working on or just to motivate me when I sit down and it's like what the hell are you doing we've been sitting here for months or sometimes years like Kai Lang here one day buddy alright uh, and then I have some yeah like I mentioned I'll pick up uh, some stuff to uh, look through like it's for custom fodder. I don't really collect as much. I, everything's kind of custom fodder to me. So when I saw the Game of Thrones figures, I love Game of Thrones, but I was like, ooh, maybe they, maybe I can repaint them. I wouldn't really use them for anything else. I'd probably just repaint them and display them like this. Um, there are some good likenesses on them, so maybe. But that's that's again for another thing. And then these guys. Uh, I'm working on it should be completed soon and uh, I'm not gonna say who they are right now but that's for later another video and I have some various heads down here figureheads uh, stuff to use stuff I want to look at just to have around all right now for the far left corner um, sandpaper always have on hand if I'm for example if I buy a figure and I want to see what the likeness is maybe I want to repaint it just to practice my painting skills like this is Scarlett Johansson from uh, the Winter Soldier Black Widow so what I'll do is I'll use like nail polish remover and a q-tip and just kinda of get all the paint off and this is um, the Black Series Han Solo and I thought this was a pretty good uh, Harrison Ford likeness so I was like ooh he has some memorable characters and finally we have a good uh, six inch scale Harrison Ford head so maybe I'll try that and see what I can do with that and also I'll prep them if I think it's worth casting and having for example like this is the unhelmeted head of uh, this certain character and then here is like his helmet <laughs> So I would like cast both of those so I can use them multiple times for uh, different things. And then this um, this T-800 endoskeleton, which I think is probably is from the NECA figure. And um, I own quite a few, but there was one release that had the, a really good head. They re-sculpted it. Uh, for some reason they finally made like a good one so that's what something I would cast and uh, I will have that in an upcoming like molding casting tutorial video to the side are like various pieces uh, if I need like on this guy he's gonna have a lot of pouches and uh, belts and guns so I like I'll dig up everything I have that falls under those categories and I kinda just leave it to the side and look at it and see like what fits where and um what to glue on in the very last stages over here is uh, a piece of sandpaper that I'll use for pastel like mixing so I use um, Prismacolor 
pastels, dry pastels. And what I do is I rub them on the sandpaper and it leaves a bit of powder. And then I use that and I mix that in with uh, when I'm painting faces and flesh tones. And that really uh, gives it an extra something. And you can also see my collection of brushes. Some of them are kind of getting to the end of the line there. So I'm going to have to go through them. Uh, brush for every job, I think. Here is also uh, my Dremel attachments to the side there. Okay, and finally, uh, maybe the most important thing to me at least, is the lighting setup. So I have these two lamps, one here and one there, with uh, like tissue paper over it to diffuse, and that's mostly for uh, photographing. You can see the black uh, piece of paper I have in the back there, and that's this, is, this also doubles as my like photo studio and um, my workstation. It's easier to have all in one. And I also have uh, a bigger lamp just to illuminate the whole thing when I'm working. Alright guys, I hope this answered some questions. I know there will always be questions, but um, I'll make sure to provide all the links uh, of the stuff I use in the description. And personally, I always like to see the workspace of an artist and what they not only what they use or material wise but what they surround themselves with because that influences like the stuff they make and how they can get to the end product uh, what they look at every day so thanks a lot for the support you guys and um, I'm gonna do a molding and casting tutorial soon and another review of a figure um, I'm gonna finish up the, that's the sci-fi guys that you see in the back uh, I will be working all summer um, on my own stuff, still still um, churning out custom action figures. So as far as the videos go, the way we've been doing it is I'll be working and I have another guy who, who films and he's uh, my assistant and he takes care of like the video editing uh, on his time while I'm working, that way I don't have to worry about the shot and like getting the work done at the same time because it can really like affect uh, the figure I'm working on so we're gonna that's gonna change up in a bit um, it might it's just gonna be a one-man uh, one-man show so um, we're gonna see where the videos go but uh, I'm still gonna be making stuff and you can follow me on Facebook uh, for that so thanks a lot guys thanks for watching <laughs>